It's great to be able to load up and play these classic games, and this is way better than using an emulator to play them, particularly being able to use pretty much whatever controller I want. As someone who was one of the first to get a ZX Spectrum when it was launched, I'd like to keep it in good working order, and unfortunately, to do that, it means not being able to use it whenever I want. Because I just know that at some point it will eventually just give up and die. So what are my options if I want to recreate the feel of the original Spectrum as closely as possible? I've played around with many of the Spectrum emulators, but none of them ever seem to recapture the magic of owning and playing on a real ZX Spectrum. With things like the ZX Spectrum Next being difficult to get hold of, and only then at crazy prices. I looked around at what other hardware solutions were available, and I want to show you in this video what I think is by far the best around, as well as possibly being the cheapest and simplest to create. So if, like me, you want to keep your original Spectrum nice and safe and lasting a bit longer, then keep watching, and I'll show you how you can do that. What I'm going to be using is ZX Bear Emulator, it's a bare metal emulator, meaning that it isn't running as an application within another operating system. It runs on a Raspberry Pi, and when the Pi boots, it goes straight into the Spectrum. ZX Bear Emulator isn't new, and I think development on it stopped a few years ago, but I found it to be a fantastic way to reproduce some of the feel of actually using a ZX Spectrum. It's completely free, and I'll leave a link to this page where you can get it in the description below. So what else are you going to need? Well, ZX Bear Emulator runs on a Raspberry Pi, and I know that at the time of this recording it's incredibly difficult to get hold of a Pi, and incredibly expensive as well. But the good news is that as the Spectrum was a very low power computer, it doesn't take much to emulate the hardware, making it perfect for an older Pi you might have lying around and wondering what to do with it. A Pi 4 would be overkill for this, but ZX Bear Emulator won't work in a Pi 4 anyway, and the developer has no plans to make it compatible. So an older model is your only option. But which one? You'll see that Pis are supported from the earliest models right up to the Pi 3. The Pi 4 is specifically mentioned as not being supported, and I couldn't get things working with the Pi 02W either. If you're thinking of using a Pi Zero, then it's worth pointing out that due to the single core nature of some of the earlier Pis, it hasn't been possible to get sound and video both output over HDMI. So the HDMI is carrying just video on those Pis. That's not a problem for the normal sized Pis, such as the original Pis, as they have a 3.5mm audio jack that can be used to feed audio out. But the Pi Zeros don't have that. I believe you can use the GPIO pins on the boards to get audio out, but that's something that's beyond the scope of this video, and certainly beyond me. I've ended up using an old Pi 2. It's more than powerful enough, and the lack of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth aren't a drawback for what I'll be using it for. So what else are, you, are we going to need, besides a Raspberry Pi and the ZX Bear emulator software? A case for your Pi. It's not essential, and you could live without it, but I really want something to protect the Pi. And besides, I've got a couple of spare cases lying around. A keyboard. The Spectrum was a keyboard-based computer, so it's crazy not to get one. You're going to need a micro SD card or an SD card to put both ZX Bear Emulator and your games on. And lastly, a games controller. The Spectrum was about before Bluetooth or Wi-Fi even existed, so your best bet is a USB wired controller. PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One and Switch Pro controllers are listed as working. I've tried various third-party controllers and some worked and some didn't, so I'd suggest experimenting to find what works best for you. One thing to bear in mind is that there is no hot swapping, so whatever controller or keyboard you want to use, make sure it's connected before you boot up. So let's start putting things together. The first thing I'm going to do is to download the ZX Bear Emulator software. There are a few different versions listed, but I suggest you save yourself the headache of trying to work out which is the right one for your Pi, and just download the one that says, all files needed in a zip file. Valid for all Pi models. Once the download is complete, go to where the zip file is located and extract the files. 
Then copy them to a micro SD or SD card, whichever type your Pi uses, and make sure the card is formatted to FAT32 before you do this. You don't have to label it, but I labelled mine as ZX Spectrum for easy identification. Next, create a new folder for your games in the root of the card. I'll come back to folders in a few minutes, but in the meantime, if you haven't got any ZX Spectrum games at this point, then there are plenty of places online to get them. And as usual, Google is a good place to start. Many of the games that were commercial releases have been made publicly available, so there are plenty of legal downloads. And of course, there are also illegal ones to be had if that's what you're after. The world of Spectrum is a great resource for all things Spectrum, and well worth checking out. Anyway, back to the way I organise my games on the card. I've got nearly 4,500 games in the games directory, so scrolling through that lot and trying to find what I'm looking for is going to be a real pain. The way I handle things is to create two new folders. I create one called Faves, for my favourite games that I know I'll be playing over and over. And I create another directory called Next, where I put games that I've always wanted to try, and I just queue them up in there. This is just how I do it. Feel free to organise however you want. I've got my SD card set up with ZX Bear Emulator and my games. I've got a third-party wired PlayStation controller plugged in, as well as my keyboard. So all that remains is to pop the card into my Pi, plug in the power, and switch on. And as you can see, the Pi is booted straight into the ZX Spectrum interface. Now, from here, you could just interact with it just as you would a real ZX Spectrum. But for me, I'm just really wanting to play my games, so I'm going to hit F1 on the keyboard, which brings up this screen. You've got a strip around the middle of the screen where you can get some keyboard tips and shortcuts. And most of the top half of the screen is essentially a file browser. So you just need to navigate down using your arrow keys to get to the folder where your games are, and then hit the space bar to enter that directory. Scroll down to the game you want to play, and hit the space bar again to select it. Once you've done that, hit F1 again to go back to the Spectrum command prompt screen, and you'll see a message at the bottom of the screen telling you that your tape file has been loaded. However, you still need to actually load the game from the tape, and you need to remember that the Spectrum keys had multiple functions. So to get the load command, you need to press J, followed by Control P, Control P, and then Enter. If you want to see why it's these keys, then you can hit the left Alt key and K to get to the Spectrum keyboard displayed on the screen, and it'll make more sense. Now that the game is loaded, you'll see that it can be played either using the keyboard or a Kempston joystick, which is the option I want to use. ZX Bear Emulator supports a range of joysticks that became standards when the Spectrum was around, as well as being able to mimic what was a pretty standard keyboard set of controls for controlling play. However, finding the key on your controller to activate these is something of a hit and miss process. On my PlayStation controller, I found it was L2 which toggled through the different joystick options, so I just went through pressing that until Kempston was selected. You'll see the options displayed at the bottom of the screen as you cycle through them. I used the keyboard key option to control Manic Miner, as there wasn't an on-screen option to choose a joystick standard. Loading up Lunar Jetman, I'm using an old third-party Xbox controller, and again, I've had to try out all of the keys to find the one which will activate the joystick selection option. With this controller, it's this button. Now at this point, I'm pretty much all set up to play whatever Spectrum game I want, whether it's keyboard or joystick based. And if I need any help remembering the keyboard layouts or shortcuts, then there is always the pop-up keyboard and help. But I wanted to take things a little bit further. So here's what I've done. Nothing high tech, I've just printed off those keyboard shortcuts and taped it to the back of the keyboard. It's quicker and easier to look under the keyboard than to interrupt whatever I'm doing to bring up the pop-up help. 
As for the keyboard, it was just doing my head in looking at a normal modern keyboard layout and trying to mentally translate that to the Spectrum's layout. And having to bring up the on-screen keyboard was really starting to frustrate me. So what I did was to find someone online who was selling keycap stickers for the Spectrum. In fact, the pack I got not only included the keycaps for the Spectrum, but the ZX81 and ZX80 as well. And this was the end result. All in all, I'm very happy with the end result. It was cheap and easy, and while I can't attach things like the ZX printer or a micro drive, both of which I've got, I really don't see that as a problem. All I really wanted to do was the occasional tinker with Spectrum Basic, but mainly to have quick and easy access to games on something that was as close as possible to the original hardware, while allowing me to use modern controllers. If you'd like to see more content like this, or if you'd like to see how I've managed to get Bluetooth and other wireless controllers working with my new Spectrum setup, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss that video when I publish it. And thanks for watching.